Hey everyone, and welcome to this quick video on how to use search filters on Flick. Um, during this video, we're going to be covering what search filters are and why they should be used. And I'll also finish the video with a really quick run through uh, for an example account of what um, kind of filters I would be looking for. So what I've done here is I've made a, a basic search fishing with no filters um, on Flick. So now that um, we have these results over here, um, what you can start to notice is some of these hashtags um, are extremely com um, competitive. So um, what you can see, for example, here is uh, fish has 3.2 million um, posts and it might be relevant, but it's way too competitive. Fishing has almost 32 million posts, um, fly fishing 6.5 million, bass fishing 5.2 million. And the, these hashtags are way too competitive for most accounts to be able to rank on. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using search filters to try and find relevant hashtags that are smaller, um, and on which um, smaller sized accounts with less average likes can rank on. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to our find search results. And on there, you can see you get a drop down. So you've got your suggested filters over here. You've got um, search filters that you've saved previously, and I'll show you how you can do that. And you've got your um, advanced or custom filters um, over here. And we're actually going to start um, with these. So let's say um, my account is a phishing account and on average, I get 400 likes roughly on my content. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following the ladder strategy and I'm going to start off um, with finding hashtags that are quite low competition um, and really easy for me to rank on. So I'm going to go into here, I'm going to average likes and I'm going to say I want hashtags that have between 100 and let's say 250 average likes. And the reason I've put 100 here is because I want to filter out all those really, really, really small hashtags where even if I do rank, um, I won't get much traffic from them. So I still want to have a minimum, um, which is around 100 likes for me. Um, and uh, uh, and I've put that up to 250 because those should still be hashtags I, I can easily rank on, where I should be easily ranking on. I'm, not, I'm going to click apply here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to want to filter by um, the total amount of posts. And over here, I'm going to say I want a minimum of 20,000. Again, this is to remove um, the um, really small hashtags with no traffic. Um, so I'm only looking at for hashtags that have more than 20,000 posts on average. And I'm going to go with, um, let's say, up to um, 150,000. Again, I'm going for hashtags I should be able to rank on, not too competitive. And then finally, what you can also do is add the uh, a, a filter for the DAPC which is the um, daily amount um, of posts um, on a hashtag on average. Um, and over here, I'm going to say, look, I, I want a minimum of 10 posts a day. I want this hashtag to be active. Um, and um, I don't really want to go, I don't really want it to go above 50 um, because again, it's going to be quite competitive um, um, past that point. So I'm going to click apply. And uh, what Flick's done here is it's applied all these filters to my initial search. Um, and I can start looking um, over here at um, hashtags that may be relevant to phishing. Um, but that are of the right um, right size um, for me. So for example, big water um, seems pretty relevant. Um, and obviously at this point, you can use all of Flick's uh, normal features, um, such as the expand um, feature to you know find more hashtags um, that might be relevant to you and, and search for different sort of subtopics and sub niches um, at, like we've covered um, in our past videos. Um, so now that I've theoretically got my hashtags for small competition, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into these filters and, and change them up a bit. So over here, I'm going to say, look, I want 250 um, likes minimum to say 400. Again, we're working for an account that gets around 400 likes on average. Over here, we're going to say, right, I want anywhere from 150,000 to, let's say, 300,000. And over here, um, let's say 50 to 100. And, you know, these numbers, um, they don't need to be exactly what I'm doing here. Um, the, the, the important thing is that you test um, and you see what works for your account. And also that you have this idea of sort of starting with a small batch, then a medium batch and then a large batch. So I'm going to click apply on these filters. And again, I've got these relevant hashtags to phishing, but um, just in the medium sort of competition realm uh, of what my account can compete on. Um, so it may be that you know you tend to reuse the same filters over and over. And what you can do is you can save these filters. So here I can say medium, medium competition filter. So medium competition filter. 
Um, and now when I save that, um, when, anytime I return to Flick, I can just, um, from the drop down, select my medium competition filter, um, and this will automatically apply your previously saved filters. The other key things you need to know about filters um, are suggested filters. So these are essentially um, filters that are enabled once you connect your Instagram account to Flick and Flick will go and analyze your account, look at your average likes, look at your engagement um, and um, determine um, what we think um, are filters that should work across the board for your content. So it won't be splitting it into low, medium and high competition, but it will give you a range where um, all the hashtags within that range, or you should have a higher or lower chance of ranking on them. And it just avoids anyone who's just getting started to pick really small hashtags where there's barely any traffic. So even if you do rank, you get no value from it. Or on the flip side, really large hashtags where um, you'll have um, a very little uh, chance of, um, of ranking. So with suggested filters, I definitely advise you to try them when you're first getting started, but then use them as a baseline and, and start customizing and saving your own filters once you start experimenting with Flick. So in this video, we had a quick look at how the hashtag filters functionality works on Flick and why you should be using them. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.